Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. Galveston as we know it today has a rich cultural history. The Spanish, Germans, French, Italians, and many more have all contributed to create this island city that we love. However, there is one group of people that claim this sandbar long before the Spanish arrived in the 16th century. There have been hundreds of separate groups of native peoples in this section of North America that we now know as the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. One of the more well-known indigenous groups along the Texas coast are the Karankawa. Evidence suggests that they may have existed as a distinct group for over 2,000 years. The Karankawa people lived a semi-nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle along the coast of what we now know as northern Mexico and the Texas coastal plains. They traveled between the barrier islands and the mainland using dugout canoes. What we now know as Galveston Island lies at the northeasternmost edge of the Karankawa's traditional homeland. Most sources regard the Karankawa people as a single tribe with distinct clans and language groups that shared a common culture. These groups included the Capones, Cojanes, Cocos, Coapites, and the Karankawas. They typically lived in groups of 50, but when gathered, could reach numbers well over 500. They utilized temporary shelters made of animal hides that were easily packed when traveling. They used natural resources such as deer skin and alligator fat for clothing, shelter, and bug deterrent. While very few physical landmarks remain beyond indigenous garbage piles known as shell middens, if you are on the west end of Galveston near Pirate's Beach, check out the historical marker of a Karankawa campsite and burial ground that was rediscovered in 1962. Portions of the burial ground have been preserved, but is surrounded by modern development. One of their main hunting and protection tools was the bow and arrow. They also used harpoons and spears to fish in the shallow water. Their diet was seasonal and travel dependent. In the winter, it consisted mainly of fish, shellfish, turtles, the occasional alligator, and various vegetation that was available on the Gulf Coast. During warmer months, they would travel further inland to hunt mammals. The Karankawa were easily identified from other native people based on their muscular stature and tattooed appearance. First-hand accounts from Spanish explorers described their food source being generally stable year-round, and because of this plentiful diet, the Karankawa were strong, healthy, and tall people. One claim that lacks the proper evidence is that the Karankawa people practice cannibalism as a means to absorb the strength of their enemies. This claim has been challenged and rehashed by historians and descendants of the Karankawa for the past century. The Karankawa were one of the first indigenous people on this part of the continent to interact with Europeans. In 1528, Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca shipwrecked with a crew of approximately 80 men on or near Galveston Island. Over 100 years later, the Karankawa met the French expedition led by René Robert Cavalier Sué de la Salle. Relations took a negative turn and both the French and the Karankawa suffered losses to materials and lives. A few children now known as the Talon children, were the only four to survive from the French expedition. When they finally returned to France, their report provided a lot of insight into native cultures. In the early 1700s, relations between outside settlers and native peoples stabilized, but the land was entrenched in conflict. As a result, Spanish set up missions, one of which became known as La Bahia, with the goal to Christianize the Karankawa people. A conflict at the fort ended in cannons being fired at the Karankawa, and the death of the Spanish fort captain. The Spanish moved their fort, yet continued to attempt to bring the Karankawa under Spanish control. In 1779, war broke out between the Karankawa and the Spanish. It lasted over 10 years, only to be brought to an end by a smallpox epidemic, which mainly affected the Spanish. This resulted in the Karankawa maintaining control of their lands and the Spanish establishing several new forts, which faced repeated Comanche attacks and the Karankawa would face a new threat on Galveston Island, pirates. First-hand accounts and documents suggest that Jean Lafitte's pirate colony were social and traded with the Karankawa on Galveston Island in the early days of settlement, but ended when the pirate colony kidnapped a Karankawa woman, and the resulting retaliation caused the pirates to retreat to the east side of Galveston. Battles between the pirates and the Karankawa took place until the Karankawa were effectively driven off of the island. Jean Lafitte was eventually forced out of Galveston by the United States Navy in 1820. In 1821, following Mexican independence from Spain, settlers began arriving to establish homesteads on the Texas Gulf Coast, leading to yet another group invading the Karankawa land. Peace was attempted, 
but unsuccessful, and violence between parties seemed to be encouraged. This pattern of new threat, attempted peace, violence, and attempted genocide continued through the Texas Revolution, and by the 1840s, the remaining Karakwa people had assimilated into society, or had migrated away from the area, giving up their land to the relentless encroachment of colonization. One of the last struggling and retreating groups of Karakwa landed near Rio Grande City, where their remaining population was nearly decimated. Considered extinct, the surviving Karakwa integrated themselves with other tribal factions in southern Texas and northern Mexico. Today, far from extinct, the Karakwan culture lives on through descendants, the Karakwan language is spoken, and their culture is celebrated by the Karakwa Kadla, or culturally mixed Karakwans. For historic resources or more information, check out the episode description. <laughs>